Welcome back to Think Cosmos, where we ponder the universe's deepest secrets and wonders. Imagine a dark, silent laboratory. Lights dimmed, equipment humming in anticipation, and at the center, a simple aluminum cylinder. Spinning faster and faster within a cage of magnetic coils. In that moment, physicists from Southampton, Glasgow, and Italy's National Research Council watched a 50-year-old cosmic riddle come to life. A faint magnetic whisper brushed the cylinder, bounced back, and returned louder. Then, without any further push, waves erupted on their own, feeding off the cylinder's rotation, growing like a storm that suddenly realizes it can roar. Black hole bomb, once pure theory, had just detonated in miniature here on Earth. The idea was first sketched in 1972. Come, picture. A rotating black hole, wrapped in its own twisted space-time. If a ripple of light or a particle wave skims that spinning void, theory says the black hole's rotation can fling that ripple back with more energy than it borrowed. A process called superradiance. Trap those amplified waves in an orbiting shell. Let them lap the hole again and again, and the energy snowballs. Press, Tukolsky and others called it a bomb, because in principle, the build-up could run away until it tears the trap apart. For decades, no one could prove it. Black holes are far away. The effect is subtle. Nature rarely gifts perfect conditions. So the team built an analog. Piaha. They spun their metal cylinder so quickly that the surface dragged the nearby magnetic field, mimicking the space-time swirl around a real black hole. When they switched on a low-loss resonator, essentially a storage ring for electromagnetic waves. The weak seed field bounced between cylinder and resonator, stealing rotational energy each pass and returning strong. Soon the apparatus was singing loud on its own, seeded only by background noise. That spontaneous crescendo was the smoking gun for a genuine superradiant instability. Laboratory proof that rotational energy can be mined this way. Why does this matter beyond bragging rights? Because every engine humanity has ever built, from fire to fusion, boils down to extracting ordered energy from some reservoir. A black hole bomb is a cosmic dynamo. Pure rotation turning into usable waves. If superradiance really works on astrophysical scales, it means spinning black holes are not just gravitational monsters, but potential power plants. Natural engines millions of times more efficient than starlight. Validating the mechanism on a tabletop nudges that dream from fantasy toward physics. Now, roll the clock forward. Imagine an advanced probe cruising the outer solar system. Instead of hauling tons of chemical propellant, it carries a lightweight resonant cavity and an array of precision mirrors. The craft swoops near a newborn micro black hole, perhaps one it manufactured from compressed matter or captured from primordial stock. It releases a calibration pulse into the cavity the pulse skims the hole's ergosphere, returns amped up, and races around again. Each lap drains a microscopic sliver of the hole's spin while boosting the wave. The cavity vents that amplified beam through a collimated nozzle, producing thrust without fuel in the conventional sense. A true black hole drive. The math hints at exhaust energies dwarfing anything fusion could muster, pushing vessels to relativistic crews. Even if taming actual black holes stays centuries away, the same physics can reshape nearer-term technology. Torah, superradiant amplifiers could become exotic power sources. Spinning superconducting rings feeding microwave lasers, beaming clean energy to distant habitats or deep space relays. Train-dragging analogs might seed compact gravitational wave generators, giving spacecraft an alternative communication channel immune to interstellar dust, and the laboratory cylinder itself, scaled down and cryogenically quiet, 
could serve as a test bed for ultra-sensitive detectors, capable of sniffing the faint tremors of passing dark matter waves. There's another twist. A super radiance is intimately tied to quantum friction. The drag that arises when the quantum vacuum rubs against a rotating surface. By watching their cylinder self-amplify from mere thermal noise, researchers have opened a window on that elusive friction. Mastering it could lead to materials that shed rotational energy into tailored radiation fields on demand, effectively turning spin into tunable light. Such metamaterials might cloak spacecraft against certain radiative signatures or recycle reaction wheel momentum into power during long voyages. Consider navigation near extreme objects. One way. If we hope to harvest energy from pulsars or skirt the maelstrom of Sagittarius I, we'll need to predict how superradiant instabilities shape the local plasma. The tabletop bomb offers a sandbox. We can tweak rotation speed, field strength, cavity shape, and map out the borderline between stable extraction and runaway flare. Those data feed directly into the hazard models mission planners will rely on when plotting gravity assist slingshots through the ergospheres of spinning neutron stars. Then there's propulsion that doesn't wait for natural black holes at all. The same equations governing the bomb describe bosonic clouds around rapidly spinning objects, like axion condensates forming giant bosonovae that could, in principle, be recreated in magnetic traps. If controlled, such clouds might act as propellantless thrusters, pump angular momentum in, let the cloud radiate it out directionally, and ride the recoil. The experiment shows the critical ingredient isn't mass, but the meeting of rotation and reflectivity. That revelation widens the design space for future drives. Skeptics will note enormous engineering gaps. Generating artificial micro-holes requires energies beyond today's colliders, and mirrors that survive near relativistic plasmas sound like alchemy. Yet history reminds us that at every leap, from steam engines to laser sails, began with tabletop curiosities that looked fanciful at first blush. The Wright Brothers' wind tunnel was a crude wooden box. Fleming's first vacuum tube barely glowed. Now we have a metal cylinder spinning in a lab, teaching us how cosmos-scale power sources ignite. An often overlooked benefit is scientific reconnaissance. Spacecraft equipped with superradiant sensors might map the spin of black holes by measuring amplified background microwaves, the way seismologists infer Earth's interior from tremors. A fleet of such probes could chart the universe's hidden inventory of intermediate mass holes, offering clues to galaxy formation. The lab bomb's essentially a calibration target, letting engineers fine-tune instruments before launch. Even nearer to home, the principles could boost ground-based astronomy. Imagine radio telescopes whose receiver cavities use rotating metasurfaces to pre-amplify faint cosmological signals directly at the dish. Cutting thermal noise without cryogenic burdens. Ah, the same trick could sharpen gravitational wave detectors, where whisper light mirrors hang on glass fibers. Inject a controlled superradiant mode to counteract quantum back action, and you edge closer to the standard quantum limit. Every advance invites caution. One. A runaway bomb in the wild sky could siphon spin so violently that it flings plasma jets across light years or destabilizes an accretion disk. Understanding those extremes is vital if humans ever inhabit systems near active quasars. Thanks to the laboratory model, we can now simulate worst-case chain reactions safely on a bench, mapping the parameter space that distinguishes a tame dynamo from a cosmic flare gun. So how do we move from this first proof to practical tech? Step 1. Scale. Conducting companies. Engineers will push for higher cylinder speeds, lower loss resonators, and maybe fluid or superconductor rotors that mimic the near frictionless drag of space-time itself. Step 2. Control. Instead of letting noise seed the instability, pulse-specific modes modulate the field and sculpt the output spectrum. Step 3. Couple. 
channel the amplified waves into microthrusters, particle accelerators, or high-energy lasers and measure efficiency. Each incremental gain writes a fresh page in the playbook of rotational energy extraction. More philosophically, the bum touches on Hawking radiation, Horizon thermodynamics, and the deep link between gravity and quantum fields. Laboratory superagents lets theorists test equations, otherwise relegated to distant quasars. If those equations hold, we refine our blueprint for warp metrics, wormhole stabilization, even quantum gravity drives. If they break, the anomalies could hint at new physics ripe for exploitation. Why? May their outcome bends the arc of spaceflight research. Fifteen minutes of reflection reveals how one whirring cylinder connects benchtop physics to the engines of tomorrow. We began with a thought experiment older than the VHS tape. We end with the tangible start of a technology tree whose fruit might power our leap to the stars. Somewhere, as you listen, that aluminum drum is still spinning, still feeding waves with its angular momentum, still reminding us that the laws of nature are not just obstacles but invitations. Take what spins, let it sing, learn its song, and one day ride the chorus beyond the edge of earth.